people often say that spelling in English is just impossible to learn, that we basically have to memorize the spelling of every single word because so many words are not pronounced as they're spelled. But despite the seeming chaos of English spelling due to the history of the language, there are some rules that can be applied. So in this lecture, we will review some of those rules. Before getting into the specific rules of spelling in the English language, let's go over first some definitions of words that I will be using when discussing the rules for spelling. The first word is vowel. A vowel is a sound that's represented by A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes the letter Y. A consonant. A consonant is any letter that represents a sound other than a vowel sound. A syllable. A syllable is a group of letters that represents one unit with one vowel sound. The root. The main part of a word to which prefixes and suffixes may be added. A prefix is a letter or a group of letters that precede a root. And you could see page 398 of your textbook for some common prefixes. A suffix is a letter or group of letters that follow the root. See page 398, 399 for some common suffixes. Note that regarding spelling rules, almost all spelling rules in English have exceptions. Following the rules, however, will make you a better speller. So, first rule, when combining a compound word, retain all the letters of both words. For example, if I'm joining the words room and mate, I have a word called roommate with two M's. I don't delete any of the letters. Or grandchild, I join them just as they are spelled without deleting any letters. The same is true when adding a prefix or a suffix to a root word. We retain all the letters of the root. So sub plus marine, submarine. Miss plus spell, misspell. This is a common this is a word that is commonly misspelled. There are two S's in misspelled because the suff the prefix is M I S and the root is S P E L L. Another example with the suffix computerize. Computerize does not have any words deleted. Most nouns in English form their plurals by simply adding S. For example, book, the plural book is books. Some nouns that end in S, Z, X, CH, or SH form the plural by adding ES because the Noun, the singular noun is already ending in an S sound, so it's hard to go tss. So we say instead of loss, we say losses, boxes, porches, dashes. Those are also generally intuitive. If you pronounce them, you know that it's an ES that's being added to make the plural. There are, however, many irregular plurals in the English language, so those we just have to learn. For example, the plural woman is women, the plural of child is children, and then there are some nouns that don't change at all between the singular and the plural. So, for example, deer, the singular and the plural exactly the same, or fish, the singular and the plural are exactly the same. There are a number of rules that we can apply to words that end in Y, and there are a large number of words in the English language that do end in Y. 
So one is when we're adding a suffix to a word that ends in Y, we change the Y to an I and then add the suffix. So for example, fancy becomes fanciful with an I when we add the suffix F-U-L. Another rule that it, we can apply is that we do not drop the Y when adding ING to a word that ends in Y. So for example, try plus the ending ING becomes trying, T-R-Y-I-N-G. We don't drop any letters, nor do we change any letters. <clears throat> and that kind of makes sense because ING is already an I, so we don't want to have two I's in a row here. To make the plural of a noun that ends in Y that's preceded by a consonant, we have a pretty firm rule that says change the Y to I and add ES. So, for example, daddy, the word daddy, the Y is preceded by the consonant D. So we change the Y to an I and we add ES, daddies. But if we have a noun ending in Y that is preceded by a vowel or vowel sound, then we just add an S. So for example, toy, Y ends in Y. The preceding the Y is a vowel, O. So we just, to form the plural, just simply add an S, toys. Another rule for spelling that we can consistently apply, although unfortunately there are exceptions, occurs when a singular noun ends in F. To form the plural of the noun, we change the F to a V and add ES. So for example, half becomes halves, or self becomes selves. But unfortunately, there are exceptions. For example, belief, the plural belief is beliefs. Because if we change the F to a V, then we get the verb form believes. So there are unfortunately exceptions. The same when we have a singular noun that ends in FE, we can change the FE to a VE and just add S to make the plural. For example, life becomes lives, or wife becomes wives. But then again, we have exceptions. Safes and cafes. Safes is just add an S without changing the V because the verb form saves is uh, already being used. and. Caves has nothing to do with cafes. The unfortunate thing is that this is probably one of the biggest problem areas for foreigners trying to learn the English language. Another spelling rule pertains to words that end in O. Nouns that end in O that are preceded by a vowel are made plural simply by adding S. So, for example, radio ends in O, is preceded by a vowel I, so we just add an S to form the plural. Likewise, rodeo, O, is preceded by an E, so we form the plural by just adding an S. Nouns, however, that end in O that are preceded by a consonant, we form the plural by adding an S or ES. And that is unfortunate that it's a something that we need to learn. So tomato becomes tomatoes, E-S. Banjo, on the other hand, becomes banjos with just an S. The final spelling rule that we can look at regards words that end in E. If the E is silent then it is often dropped before a suffix beginning with a vowel and is usually retained with a suffix that begins with a consonant. So for example, love, 
the E is silent in that word, in that noun. So when we add the suffix A-B-L-E to make the noun into an adjective, lovable, the E is dropped. But when we add the L-Y to make love into an adverb, lovely, because the suffix ends or starts with a consonant, then we don't drop the final E. Same thing with hope. Hoping, we drop the E because the suffix ing starts with a vowel, but we don't drop it in hopeful because the suffix starts with a consonant.